All right, everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good day, whatever it is for you, wherever you're at. Um, I want to invite you to share this periscope by swiping from left to right. If you're on an iOS device, you just swipe from left to right. Boom, boom. And um, Birmingham, England, glad that you're here. Wyoming. I'm using an iOS device from left to right. That's an iOS device. If you're on an Android, you swipe from down to up, down to up. Scroll, click on share, and you can share it via Periscope, Facebook, or Twitter. Romania, how are you doing over there in Romania? Glad that you're here. Netherlands, glad that you're here. I'll leave it there. <laughs> so scroll. Swipe from left to right. Scroll, click on share via Periscope, Facebook, or Twitter. Scroll. Click on share. You can share <laughs> via Periscope, Facebook, or Twitter. All right? And um, I want to invite you to go ahead and share this Periscope right now. Yeah, the title of the Periscope today is... Uh, title of the Periscope today is, do you know how much this costs? I'll let you know. You wonder what I'm talking about? We'll find out in a second. Do you know how much this costs? How much does this cost? We're going to find out. So scroll, click on share via Periscope, Facebook, or Twitter. I'm on planet Earth right now, Simon. <laughs> um, it's left, swipe left to right or up to down. I always say up to down. It's just so backwards. Down to up, down to up, down to up. All right, so I'm just waiting for everybody to populate the room. So as you're coming in, as we like to do, you can't see anything, you can only hear. Javier, you might need to shut it down and then, um, you might need to shut it down and then jump back in. So swipe up from down to up. Swipe up. And um, if, if it's not working for you, just log out and log back in. It should work for you when you come back in. All right, everybody, so where are you at as you're coming in right now? And it's, and it's a new day, we all have life, so we can all show love today and just tap on the screen or put hearts on the screen because we're happy to be alive and be together and get into the Word of God. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sometimes I wonder why you guys come in here just dreary. Let's, let's show some love. All right, Arizona, Buckingham, Virginia, Texas, Pennsylvania, the Bahamas, Georgetown, Kentucky, um, North Carolina, State M.O. Missouri. I used to live in Missouri. Wisconsin, Southern University, Florida, baby. Alberta, T. Dot City. Tobago. I'm going to be in Tobago this week. St. Lucia, Brooklyn. For everybody that's out in Trinidad and Tobago, or Tobago, really, I'm going to be out in Tobago this week. I'll be headed over to Trinidad on Thursday. I headed out to Trinidad. Then I, I think I head over to Tobago on Friday. I'm going to try to put that information out because I'll be out in Tobago for the whole week right before, um, yeah, I'll be out in Tobago for the whole week. New Orleans, ever coming to Indy? I'm not sure. Atlanta, G Georgia. Toronto in February. You know too much. <laughs> That's true. Um, I'm going to be speaking out in Tobago at the ASI convention. They're going to be having an ASI convention. I see you, Rio. They're going to be having an ASI convention out in um, Tobago, so I'll be speaking at the ASI meetings. Um, okay, so I invite you to be there. I'll be there a whole week. I invite you to be there. If you're in Tobago, let all your brothers and sisters know. Jump on the phone. Let them know. Jump on Facebook, Twitter, however you communicate. All right? Praise God that I can come. All right. 
Oh, you'll be there? All right, praise the Lord. Of course you'll be there. Of course you'll be there, Simmer. All right. Hey, praise God. So, um, C. Mersalina, um, follow up on that, all right, bro? All right? See, I try to stay in touch with you. We try to follow up on what's going on on here because we're, I'm serious about this. Thanks. I'm glad to be back. All right, so let's have a word of prayer and we're going to get right into it. And once again, if you're just coming in right now, just scroll from left to right if you're on an iOS device or scroll from down to up. Click on share, share via Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, and you can do that now. All right? And yes, I'll be in Tobago. So let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you that we can all come together in this fashion. It's a blessing for brothers and sisters to be able to come together to fellowship with one another and to enjoy meaningful time in that which will minister to our eternal soul salvation. And now I'm asking that you would settle our minds, that you would remove everything that would distract or annoy, that you would please uh, place us within an atmosphere of sobriety so that your word will not be lost on us. Please break up the fallow ground of our hearts that the seed of truth might find good soil to bring forth fruit unto your honor and glory. Cleanse us of pride and of self-righteousness and of self-trust. I ask for thy Holy Spirit to be our teacher. You promised that if our parents being evil know how to give good gifts unto their children, how much more would you, our Father, which is in heaven, give the Holy Spirit unto them that ask him? And we ask, Lord, in faith. May your name be lifted up. Thank you so much for hearing our prayers, Father, for this thing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Title of the scope um, this morning is... You want to know how much this costs? Open your Bibles with me. By the way, everybody get a Bible because you need a Bible this morning. Open your Bibles with me. Open your Bibles with me. Glad that you're in here, Ukraine. Open your Bibles with me. We're going to the book of Luke. And definitely going to want a Bible this morning. Luke. Going to Luke chapter 14. Luke the 14th chapter. Luke chapter 14. And we're looking at verse... Luke chapter 14 and we're looking at verse 28. Luke chapter 14 and we're looking at verse 28. This is what the Bible says here in Luke chapter 14 looking at verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he hath sufficient to finish it lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock. Which of you intending to build a, build a tower would not sit down first and count the cost? Have you, ever seen, have you ever seen somebody start on a building project before, a construction project, and then that building project or that construction project seemed like it was the everlasting building project, like it was the everlasting construction project, like somebody that started on that new bathroom in their house, so to say, or that new room. And that new room or that new bathroom continues to be that new room or that new bathroom that is continually under construction for years on top of years on top of years on top of years on top of years. Has any of you out there actually witnessed that? Because I know I've witnessed that before. Have you witnessed that before? If you've witnessed that, tap on the screen, put hearts on the screen, or you can just say yes. And it's evident, right? It's evident the reason why these people are engaged in this continual construction project is because from the onset, they didn't count the cost. From the onset, they didn't count the cost. But I want you to think about this, please. This is the words of Jesus that we're looking at here in the book of Luke, chapter 14 and verse 28. And I want to read it once again. Please pay close attention. He said, For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Now, when you know that you're looking at the words of Jesus, you must always know that there's a whole lot to the words of Jesus. Don't take it for surface value. Go as deep as your heart can take you as you're led by the Spirit of God because you'll never go beyond the thoughts of God. Listen to me. Jesus could have said, which of you intending to build a house? 
Jesus could have said, which of you intending to build a barn? Jesus could have said, which of you intending to build a, 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 a stable? But he didn't say any of those things. He said, which of you intending to build a tower? Sit it not down first and count up the cost. You have to think, why did Jesus say building a tower? I want you to go with me in the book, to the book of Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. This will be a familiar scripture to many of us here. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. Because in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10, the, pi the Bible tells us something concerning a tower. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10 tells us, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. In Proverbs 18 and verse 10, the Bible says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Now, hmm. If the righteous are running into this tower, which according to the Bible is the name of the Lord, if they're running into this tower to find safety, then obviously it's evident that they're being pursued by an assailant. They're being pursued by an assailant and therefore they seek for refuge in this tower so that they might have safety. Is that clear to everyone? I want you to follow every point that I'm setting forth before you from the Word of God because it's pertinent. If it's clear, tap on the screen, put hearts on the screen. If it's clear, just say yes. Walk with me. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Now the question is, who are the righteous fleeing from? Who are the righteous fleeing from that they might find safety? Go with me now to the book of Psalms chapter 61. Psalm chapter 61 and we're going to verse 3. Psalm chapter 61 and verse 3. The Bible will let us know who the righteous are fleeing from into the strong tower so that they might find safety. In Psalm 61 and verse 3, the Bible says here, For thou hast been a shelter for me and the strong tower from the enemy. Here David is speaking to God and he says to God, you've been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. So it's the enemy that the righteous are fleeing from. It's the enemy that the righteous realize they need to find a source of safety from. And that source of safety, ladies and gentlemen, is the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower. Now, listen to me. The, name, the word enemy there in the original Hebrew from whence it was translated means adversary. The name enemy there means adversary. So the righteous are fleeing from the adversary and they flee into the name of the Lord which is their strong tower that provides them with safety. Now who is the adversary ladies and gentlemen that God's people need to keep watch who is, the, who is the adversary, ladies and gentlemen, that God's people are seeking to flee from? It's definitely Satan. Let's go there in the Bible to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. Who is the adversary that we need to be fleeing from? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walketh about like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. So the adversary is the devil whom, who's, the adversary is the devil whom is roaming about this world like a roaring lion because he's seeking for whom he may devour. Now I want you to think about this. Please take time to consider what I'm getting to share with you. If you're following everything that I've shared with you thus far, tap on the screen, put hearts on the screen, say yes. Is everybody following so far? So let's start over and I'm going to throw all the, the scriptures out to you once again very quickly. In the book of Luke chapter 14 and verse 28, I believe it was. The Bible tells us, Which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost to see if he has sufficient to finish it? Now why did Jesus use a tower? Well, we've looked at the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10, which tells us the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Who are the righteous running from? Who are the righteous running from, seeking for safety from? The Bible tells us in Psalm 61 and verse 3, 
For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. The righteous are fleeing from the enemy. The word enemy means adversary. The righteous are fleeing from the adversary and they find safety in the tower, the name of the Lord. And we found out in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8 that the adversary is none other than the devil who is going to and fro in this world like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. Now, listen to me. When you think of a tower, ladies and gentlemen, this is a stronghold. It's a structure that is to provide one with safety from invaders. In other words, if you were to go into a tower, fleeing from an enemy, and you went into a tower, you would no longer be accessible to that enemy. You're no longer accessible. That enemy can no longer find access to you, right? Even though you're in the middle of a battlefield, as long as you're inside of that tower, that enemy can no longer find access to you. And even though there might be arrows flying, swords being uh, um, 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 swung and so forth, bullets flying outside of that tower, as long as you remain within that tower, whatever is going on outside, cannot find access to you. Listen, the name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Who are they safe from? They're safe from the adversary. Who's the adversary? The devil. I'm going to come back to this point that I was making a little bit earlier about the enemy not being able to find access to you. Everything that's going on in the battlefield can't touch you as long as you continue to remain within that tower in a moment from now. But I just wanted to plant that in your mind for you to consider as we continue to look at a couple more principles in the Bible. So it's the name of the Lord that's the strong tower. I want you to go with me now to the book of Acts. Acts. Just throwing some principles out there right now, right? Because we're going to take them and we're going to put them together in a few minutes from now. And we're going to see something that I pray will be more than eternal blessing to your souls. We're looking to the book of Acts right now. I want you to see what the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4 concerning the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. We're looking at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, and I'm going to begin at verse 11 so that you know exactly who the Bible is speaking of here. Matter of fact, let's start at Acts chapter 4 and verse 10. It says this, Acts chapter 4 and verse 10. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of Nazareth rather, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Listen closely. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, what is that name? What is that name? What is that name that is given under heaven whereby we can be saved? Tell me what that name is. That name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. So Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, is our... Jesus is the name that is given unto men whereby we might be saved. That is the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower that the righteous run into and are safe. Who are they made safe from? The adversary. Who's the adversary? The devil, the one who walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking for whom he may devour. But what does the name Jesus mean? What does the name Jesus mean? Tell me, what does the name Jesus mean? Somebody tell me what the name Jesus means. Now, Jesus sounds like Jesus. What does the name Jesus mean? Tell me what the name Jesus means. Ah, God is salvation savior god is salvation savior a savior is one that delivers a savior is one that delivers or saves what does jesus save us from what does jesus deliver us from go with me to matthew chapter 1 and verse 21 you know the scripture 
Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. What does Jesus save us from? We're looking at Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. The Bible says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, came into this world to save us from our sin. So when the righteous are running into the name of the Lord, when the righteous are fleeing from the adversary, what are they actually seeking for deliverance from? They are seeking for deliverance from sin. Are you with me right now? They are seeking for deliverance from sin. If everybody's following what I'm trying to share with you right now, walk with me. Tap on the screen, put hearts on the screen. We're putting together a picture from the Word of God. And we're only halfway there. The righteous are seeking deliverance from sin. They are fleeing from the devil because the devil is pursuing them. The devil is trying to tempt them, to draw them into transgressing the will of God. And they are fleeing from the adversary into the name of the Lord because they do not want to succumb to sin. They find access to deliverance from sin by accessing the name of the Lord, the strong tower. Now, if the name of the Lord, if the name of the Lord is the strong tower that delivers us from Satan, that delivers us from temptation, that delivers us, that delivers us from succumbing to sin, how do we access the name of the Lord? How do we access the name of the Lord? Because we need to access it, right? All of us in here, I pray that all of us in here want deliverance from sin. I pray that all of us in here do not want to be overcome by the enemy. So the question is, how do we find access into the name of the Lord? Go with me to the book of... I'm going to go to simple scriptures. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Listen closely. John chapter 1 and verse 12. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Glad that you're here, prevail, Lake Adon. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Look what it says in John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them gave he, pa to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Look at it again. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So if you want to access the name of the Lord, you have to have faith in God. Wait a second, what does this mean? If you want to access the name of the Lord, you have to have faith in him. You have to have total, unwavering faith in him. You have to receive him receive him as what you have to receive him as your strong tower what's the point before we move any further what's the point what's the point listen to this if you want to be able to access the name of the Lord as a strong tower to deliver you from the enemy then you must fully accept with all of your heart that Jesus Christ can deliver you from the temptations of Satan that he can deliver you from succumbing from falling to the temptations of Satan and that he can keep you ladies and gentlemen in this world from this world listen the tower the tower is a structure that is set up in this world but it fortifies those that are in the tower from everything that's going on outside around them in this world listen to I say it again a tower is a structure that can fortify people from what's going on outside of the tower while they remain right in the midst of the battlefield. 
we have to receive Jesus Christ fully into our hearts, fully believing, fully persuaded that He can deliver us from the power of Satan, from the temptations that the enemy hurls at us, and that He can make us a stronghold in this world to keep us from falling into sin. Does that make sense? Should I say that to you another, a different way? Let me say it again. We have to realize that Jesus can deliver us from temptation and that He can so empower us that we no longer have to fall into sin. A tower, ladies and gentlemen, fortifies you against the battlefield. Do you understand? As long as you remain inside of the tower, what's going on in the world can never impact you. As long as we, as we remain in Jesus Christ, we do not have to succumb to the temptations of Satan. We do not have to fall to the things of this world. Like Jesus says, we are to be in this world, but not of this world. To be hidden in the tower. How do we find access into the tower? The Bible says, but as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on, the name, on his name. Now notice this, notice this. If you totally believe in the name of Christ, if you totally, totally believe in the character of Jesus Christ, that he is our savior, that he can deliver us, that he can empower us and keep us from falling, if you totally believe that, the Bible says you'll receive him. You'll receive him as your savior. You'll totally receive him. The question is, no, I won't even say question. Think about this. To receive something means that it has to be made available to you. Walk with me now. To receive something means that it has to be made available to you because you can't receive something that's not available to you. Is that, is that understandable? If yes, tap on the screen, put hearts on the screen, say yes. In other words, you couldn't receive this scope unless I put it out there for you guys to see in here. Are you understanding? You can't receive something unless it's made available to you. So the question is this, how was Christ made available to us? How was Christ made available to us? Go with me now to the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. Go with me now to John chapter 3 verse 16. Listen closely. John chapter 3 16. How was Christ made available to us? John chapter 3 16. The Bible tells us there. For God so loved the world that he gave, there it is, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How was Christ made available to us? The Father gave him to us. How was Christ made available to us? The Father gave him to us. God the Father gave us his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that we might have a strong tower to fortify us against the assaults of Satan. But now, let's go one step further. When God the Father gave Christ to us to provide us with the strong tower so that we could be safe away from the enemy, what did God the Father send His Son Jesus Christ to do for us? You know the answer. When God the Father sent His Son into this world so that we might receive Him, what did He send Christ to do for us so that we might be delivered from sin by Him? Go with me to the book of Romans. Go with me to the book of Romans. Go with me to the book of Romans chapter 5. We're looking at Romans chapter 5. I know you know the answer, but we need to look at this from the Bible. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I want you to know, anybody that will come in here and say ignorance is displaying ignorance. Listen and learn and be blessed because God wants to enlighten you. Romans chapter 5. We're looking at Romans chapter 5, ladies and gentlemen. Are you here with me? Say amen. Matter of fact, say amen. 
Are you here? Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God sent His Son into this world to die for us so that we might have a strong tower to give us a stronghold of deliverance from the temptations of Satan and from succumbing, from falling to the power of sin. And when God sent His Son into the world to die for us, while we were yet sinners, in what fashion did Jesus Christ come? Is everybody following everything that I'm sharing so far? If you're following everything that I've said so far, tap on the screen, put hearts on the screen, say yes. If you don't get it, say no. Because all we're doing is building a picture right now. Okay, now listen closely. When Jesus came into this world to die for our sins, in what fashion did he come? I want you to go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. This is very important. This is extremely important. Please do not miss this. Hebrews chapter 2. In Hebrews chapter 2, in Hebrews chapter 2, beginning at verse 14, look what the Bible says. For as much then as Christ, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, the Bible is speaking of us, you and I, as the children of God, that we have been partakers of flesh and blood. This is our mortal nature, which is subject to death. The Bible says, for as, for as much then, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Number one, Jesus Christ took upon himself flesh and blood. The same way that we have mortal natures, that are subject to death. Jesus Christ took upon himself a nature that could as well be subject to death, which means Jesus Christ surrendered his immortality and took upon himself mortality so that he would be capable of experiencing death on our behalf for the transgression of the law which we are worthy of experiencing so that he might destroy the devil and his stronghold that he has over us through the bondage of sin. Can I say that in a different way? Jesus Christ took upon himself our fallen mortal natures. He surrendered his mortality. He took upon himself immortality. Excuse me, he surrendered his immortality and took upon himself mortality so that he might die and break the stronghold that the devil holds over humanity. Let me go one step further. Listen to this. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now hold on a second. The Bible says here, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject through, subject through bondage. Now I want you to think with me. Think with me. Why would somebody be fearful of death? Why would somebody be fearful of death? What does the Bible say the wages of sin is? What does Romans 6 and verse 23 say? The wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23 says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So death is the result of sin. Death is the result of sin. Sin. Does everybody understand that? Tap on the screen, put hearts on the screen. I'm getting to a point. 
Death is the result of sin. There can be no death without sin. There can be no death without sin. Are you all following so far? Yes. So why would somebody be fearful of death? The only reason someone would be fearful of death was because of the guilt of sin. Listen closely. The only reason someone would be fearful of death is because of the guilt of sin. Therefore, when Jesus Christ put off his immortality to take upon himself mortality so that he could die to satisfy the requirements of the law, which is, we sinned, we must die. No, he comes to die in our place to break the stronghold that the devil has over us. But not only that, he also comes to deliver us from the fear that we would have continually lived our lives in if he had not performed this sacrifice for us. And that is the guilt. The guilt. The guilt of sin. Listen. How many of you are trying to shake the guilt of sin? You know, many of us stay in bondage to Satan because we feel extremely guilty for the sins that we have practiced. But Jesus came to die, to deliver us from the fear of death. He came to deliver us from the fear, the fear of death, the guilt of walking around saying, God can never accept me. I'm going to die. I'm going to burn in the fires of hell for these sins that I committed. He came to save us from the guilt of sin. Do you understand that? Do you understand that he came to deliver you from the guilt of sin? You need to understand that. God doesn't want you walking around feeling guilty. He's provided a sacrifice so that you can be liberated from that guilt. That you can have peace and freedom in Jesus Christ. But let's go one step further. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen closely. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wait a second, let's go one step further. I know you, and I know you all are wondering, why, what am I talking about? How is this all connecting? You're going to see in a second. The Bible says, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, he took on him the seed of Abraham. Listen to this, that's Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. So when Jesus Christ came into this world to deliver humanity from sin, when Jesus Christ put off his immortality and took upon himself mortality, listen, Jesus didn't come into this world with the nature of angels. Jesus didn't even come into this world with the nature that Adam had prior to his fall to sin in the Garden of Eden. When Jesus came into this world, he took upon himself the seed of Abraham, which means he took upon himself the same nature that Abraham gave unto his lineage. The same nature that Abraham gave unto his offspring. Which means when Jesus came into this world, God took upon himself fallen, sinful nature. God, the divine God, took upon himself fallen, sinful nature. A sinful nature that was degenerated by sin. That was degenerated by sin for thousands of years. This lets us know. If Jesus was able to overcome sin, that we can overcome sin as well. Because as a man, Jesus possessed the same fallen human nature that we possess. But that human nature that Christ possessed was fully yielded to the outworking of the will 
of the Spirit of God. Are you understanding what I'm sharing with you? Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. And listen closely. God sent His Son into this world so that we might be delivered from the temptations of Satan, that we might be delivered from the guilt of sin, that we might know that we, even though in this world, might be kept from succumbing to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. In Jesus Christ, God has provided for us a Savior that can deliver us from Satan, from our fallen sinful natures, and from living a life of backsliding and double-mindedness. He can fortify us against the things of this world. Jesus died to provide us with a strong tower. You don't believe that? When Jesus died on the cross, what were his final words? I want you to go with me to John chapter 6. John. Go with me to John. Go with me to John. John chapter 19. John chapter 19 and verse 30. In John chapter 19 and verse 30, the Bible says, as Jesus was on the cross, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost ladies and gentlemen when Jesus died on the cross his final words were it is finished what was finished go with me back to Luke chapter 14 Luke chapter 14 and verse 28 in Luke chapter 14 and verse 28 the Bible says for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him when Jesus died on the cross he finished building the tower that we can run into it and, our, and be safe. The work of salvation, listen to me, the plan of salvation was established. The strong tower was made secure. Humanity would now have a means by which we could be delivered from temptation, saved from the power of Satan, delivered from the guilt of sin, and kept from falling to our fallen sinful natures. Luke 14 and verse 28, the tower was completed when Jesus Christ said, it is finished. It is finished. Brothers and sisters, and the Bible says, lest happily, after you have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock. Let me tell you something. If Jesus was not able to finish that tower, all of the host of hell would have mocked at God and said, See, I told you it's impossible to deliver man from sin. Man can never keep your law. Man will never serve you out of love. The Bible says when Jesus did his work on the cross, when Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for our sins, the host of hell wasn't able to mock at him. On the contrary, he made an open show of the host of hell according to the book of Colossians. Go with me now to Colossians chapter 2. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14, speaking of the work of the cross, the Bible says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Listen closely. Nailing it to his cross. Listen closely. And it goes on to say, and having spoiled principalities and powers, stop. 
You know what it means when it says he spoiled principalities and powers, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen? Do you know what it means that he spoiled them? The word spoils them, spoiled them means he robbed them. He took from them their possessions. You know what, you know what the devil possessed? You know, what, you know who the devil had in bondage? Who now Jesus took from them? Us. Us. We no longer are in bondage to the devil. God took the spoils of the world, the spoils, the treasure that he wanted was us. Listen closely. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. <laughs> he openly made a show of them and said, look at it, the devil has no power. He's no greater than God. The whole universe saw that love is greater than sin. Come on. You guys are not hearing me. How much did this cost? How much did this cost? You know how much this costed? This, this costed God giving up his only son. You know how much this costed? The Bible says before God built this tower, he counted the cost. He sat down and he said, son, you know if we want them, if we want them back, if we want the human race back, you know what this is going to cost us? We're going to have to separate from one another. We've been together for eternity, but now we're going to have to separate from one another. You know how much this is going to cost us? Son, you're going to have to give up your immortality and take upon yourself human nature. But you can't take upon yourself human nature like man in his perfect state because then that's not going to settle the controversy. You're going to have to take upon yourself human nature after human nature has been beaten down by the degradation of sin. Son, you're going to have to remove your king kingly robes. You're going to have to remove your kingly robes. You're going to have to wear dusty sandals. You're going to have to wear a traveler's garment. You're going to have to walk around with foolish men that are made of dirt and they're going to mock you. Even though they have our breath in, our, our breath in their lungs, they're going to mock you and you're going to have to love them. You're going to have to surrender your place as God and walk as man. It's going to cost us. Not only that, you're going to have to re not only are you going to have oh, not only are you going to have to remove your kingly garments to wear humble travelers garments you're going to have to be stripped naked beaten and placed on a cross and die naked in the presence of men to save those very men from their sins it's going to cost us a lot are you willing to pay the price? God said, I've counted the cost. And you know what? Even if only one of them accepts it, I'm willing to pay the price. You're not even hearing me. God did all of that. Just for one of us to accept it? Just for you to accept it? Just for you? God did all of that just for you to accept it. He said, the cost, the cost is worth paying if only one of them accepts it. Just one. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 14 again. Luke chapter 14. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, if he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold begin to mock him. You want to know the context in which Jesus made that statement? Do you want to know the context in which Jesus made that statement? Let's go to Luke chapter 14 and verse 26. Listen closely. If any man come to me, 
and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and his children and brethren and sister, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost? Listen. Did you count the cost? See, many of us, many of us, we've pro and this is not for those of you out there that profess to be Christians. Many of us who profess to be Christians and servants of God, you haven't counted the cost. That's why the world is mocking your Christianity. Because all they see in you is that person that you were laughing at at the beginning of this scope. The person that said, yeah, I'm going to build this new addition to my house. And they've been building that new addition to their house for 20 years unfinished room turned, in, turned into storage for garbage and junk why? because they didn't count the cost at the, at the beginning of the construction process, process and that's the same thing with many of us we say oh we're going to be servants of God we're going, to, we're going to follow Jesus but you didn't count the cost you didn't count the cost you didn't count the cost and all people so what are you? That's why the world is mocking, looking on at you, saying, look at this guy, talking about he's a Christian. You're not willing to sacrifice for the truth, not willing to give up the things of this world. You clearly have encountered the cost. That's why you're a mockery. You're a mockery to the cause of Christianity. You're a laughing stock to the world because it didn't count the cost. People look at you. You know, when I was a kid, there was a building that I would always see in Queens, New York, as I was traveling. It was a big business building. It was in a state of construction for at least, I mean, at least 19 years. I was always look at this thing and say, when in the world are they going to finish this? I wonder how many people in your life are looking at you and say, I wonder when this person is actually going to live up to their profession. When are they actually going to be the Christian that they say they're going to be? How many of your spouses that you say, Lord, I, I pray for my spouse, pray for my husband, pray for my wife because they need to come to Jesus. I wonder how many of your husbands and wives are looking at you saying, I wonder when she is actually going to be the, the, the servant of Christ that she's talking about. How many of your children are looking at you like that? How many of your parents are looking at you children that are professing that you're servants of God? When are they ever going to finish this work? When are they ever going to really live up to their profession? We have to count the cost. That's why Jesus said, if you're not willing to bear the cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Because Jesus was willing to bear the cross. And a disciple follows the lead of his teacher. The disciple follows the lead of his teacher. Let me tell you something. You have nothing that is of value. You have nothing that is of value. You have nothing that is of value. The only reason that any of us have any value is because God has placed value upon our lives. If God, isn't placed, if God didn't place value into us, we would be worthless. We would be worthless. And the only way that we can actually live up to our worth is if we follow the master to the cross. But what if some don't believe? As Paul says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. But what if some do, don't believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and that thou mightest overcome when thou art judged. God is looking for men and women that will count the cost and that will totally receive Jesus Christ by faith. The name of the Lord is there. The strong tower is there. Safety is here. God counted the cost that was necessary to build the tower. Are you willing to count the cost that's necessary to enter into it? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and are safe count 
the cost to answer the question of the scope. You want to know how much this costs? Do you know how much this costs? The answer is, it costs everything. It costs everything. And if you want to give God your everything today, just put everything on the screen. Everything. If you want to give God your everything today, just put the word everything on the screen. There may be someone in here right now that has never given their heart to Jesus before. And as you have listened to this Bible study, the Spirit of God has spoken to your heart and has caused you to realize that God has given everything so that you might have everything. So that you might receive a crown of life, that you might be a recipient of eternal life, that you might escape the corruptions of this world and have the privilege of entering into God's eternal kingdom. If it is your desire this day for the very first time to give your heart to Jesus Christ, to accept him as your Lord and as your Savior, and receive Bible studies in preparation for baptism. I want to say that again. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ and as your Lord and as your Savior for the very first time, and to receive Bible studies in preparation for baptism, if that is a decision that you would like to make right now, just put the letter S on the screen for surrender. Is there anyone that would like to make that decision right now? All you have to do is put the letter S on the screen. God bless you, still0954. Somebody put my email on the screen for still0954, please. Is there anyone else that would like to say, Lord, I would like to surrender my heart to you for the very first time and I would like to receive Bible studies in preparation for baptism. Is there anyone else here like that? I know there's somebody else here like that. There you go. Ram, ah, Ram Rhino, glad to see you, my friend. Is there somebody for the very first time? You're outside of Jesus Christ. You haven't accepted him as your Lord and as your Savior. And right now you would like to receive Christ as your Savior. And you would like to receive Bible studies in, prepar in preparation for baptism. If you would like to make that decision, all you have to do is put the letter S on the screen. Is there anyone here like that? All you have to do is put the letter S on the screen. S for surrender. There you go. There you go. Saint, Saint Angie. Saint Ange. Somebody put my... My email on the screen for St. Ads. God bless you, brother. This is the time. Definitely, bro. Definitely. Can somebody put my email on the screen for St. Ange, please? I hope I said that right, bro. I don't mean to be chopping up your name. Is there anyone else? There is somebody else. Don't be fearful to make the decision. You know, God uses all types of means to reach out to us, and this is how he's trying to reach out to you right now. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. It's not me speaking to you. It's the Spirit of God pricking your heart. Just receive him. This is your decision between you and God. I'm just here to give you the opportunity. All you have to do is put the letter S on the screen. Is there anyone else that would like to make that decision before I close up this scope? This is your opportunity. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do right now. Because tomorrow isn't promised. You and God. I know it's a hard decision to make. I've been there. But I also know that in the service of God, there is peace and joy like you can never comprehend until you experience it. Is there anyone else that would like to say, Lord, I surrender my heart? All you have to do is type on the screen and put a letter S and you'll begin a new path right now. Anyone else like to make that decision? There you go, Caroline. There you go. Thank God for just giving you the heart to surrender. The devil's trying to keep you away. Somebody put my, uh, my email on the screen for Caroline. Can somebody? God bless you. Can somebody? Carolyn, right? Can somebody put my email on the screen for her? It's a good thing that you're thanking her. We'll give her the email so she knows where to contact. Thank you. I appreciate that. Number four, then run to 777 at gmail.com. 
There you go. Now you can, <laughs> now you can encourage her. <laughs> now you can encourage her. Praise the Lord. All right. Oh, praise God. Praise God, Callan. I think that's the last person right now. There may be one more. If there is one more. There may be one more. If there's one more person that would like to say, Lord, I want to surrender my heart to you for the very first time. And I would like to receive Bible study in preparation for baptism. This is your opportunity. All you have to do is put the letter S on the screen. That's it. Type on the screen S. This is your opportunity. Don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow or how you're going to move forward in this walk. Just worry about taking the first step and then God will take you on the second and the third and the fourth. All you have to do is make the first step. And the first step is just touching that letter S on the screen. That's it. Just that simple. Will you make that decision for God? between you and the Lord. Between you and God. There you go. There you go. Hazel Berisha. There we go. Praise the Lord. Ah, Fabian Lynn. Praise the Lord for you as well. Praise the Lord for both of you. There we go. Praise God for the both of you. Praise the Lord for the both of you. Put the, can you put my email up on the screen for them? All right. Praise God for the both of you. I believe that's... Okay, praise God, um, Haddish. Okay. So, with that... I'm going to close in prayer. Really glad that you guys were able to be here with me on this. It was a blessing. Um, and I'm glad that you allowed the Lord to lead you in making some decisions today for Him. Because now is the acceptable time of salvation. All right. So let's have a word of prayer. And uh, we're going to close up this scope. And um, oh, yeah, before I do that. People are putting up the YouTube. I invite you to be a subscriber to... Uh, I'm sorry. I know I blocked somebody by accident. Um, I'm, everybody that I block, I always unblock them anyway. But for those I accidentally block, forgive me. Um, and that's all I can do with that right now. So after this is over, I can do all the unblocking and all that stuff. But for those of you that are first-time viewers, how many is this first time you've ever been on the scope? Put the number one on the screen. If you're the first time that you ever came into this scope, you just stumbled in here. First time, just put the number one on the screen. And um, for all the newcomers, Jessica, Rabbi T, Rabbi T, uh, T, glad that you're here. Vel M, glad that you're here. I'm going to invite you to be a follower here. I invite you to be a subscriber to the YouTube channel. Carolyn, um, I'm going to invite you to be a subscriber to the YouTube channel. I have hundreds of videos over there on YouTube, millions of views, and just deal with all types of different subjects, running the gamut current events with Bible prophecy and of course messages solely dealing with our walk with the Lord and salvation and just things going on in the world that we need to understand things concerning the entertainment industry and you name it just running the gamut so I want to invite you to be a subscriber to the YouTube channel follower on Facebook and as well a follower on Twitter all right I'm I am a seventh day Adventist I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and why am I a Seventh-day Adventist? Because I believe in all of the Bible. And, um, you know, when you come in here, all we focus on is the Bible. And so I really invite anybody, just come in, and we get into the Bible. And that's it. From Genesis to Revelation, we put everything to the Bible, as the Bible tells us. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. We need to make sure that everything that we hear and that we accept as a doctrine for the governing of our lives it has to be strictly according to the bible strictly according to the word of god so when we get in here i always compare scripture with scripture and that's it 
right? And that's something that everybody that is here will attest to what, whatever denomination they're a part of because this is not about, we're not, we're not focused on denominations in this scope. We're focused on the Bible, the Word of God. And we know that if we accept the Word of God as truth, then it will make us a part of that remnant which the dragon is wroth with ultimately that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. If you're seeking to be led into all truth, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that you worship on Saturday as well. You worship, you worship on the Sabbath day, the seventh day, Exodus 20, verse 8. <laughs> Amen. So praise the Lord. All right, so um, praise the Lord for that. All right, so let's have a word of prayer. Oh, by the way, for those that kept on asking about leper vision, we're definitely trying to move forward in that. If you want to support, you know how you can support. You can go to the Forerunner Chronicles website. You can make a donation to leper vision. We want to get that done this year. We're going to be doing us a whole lot of traveling this year. Um, and you guys will be with us. You can go to the GoFundMe as well. All right, and put it in for that. Put it in through there. So... Um, I will be in to, uh, Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, um, coming uh, this week. So I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> uh, prophecy. Um, um, but um, I invite everybody who's out in Trinidad and Tobago to come out to the, to the meetings in Tobago, which are going to be the ASI meeting that will be going on. Will I be in Ireland? I'll be in Scotland. I'll be in Scotland later this year. I will be in Scotland this, later this year. So I don't know how close that is to Ireland. I'm horrible with geography, but I will be in Scotland. Um, and I might be in the UK as well. Well, I definitely will be in the UK. We'll be all over. But as I'm going different, I'll definitely be in California several times this year as well. When I'm, when I'm going different places, I'm going to put the information up on the screen so everybody will know, okay? I'll put, not up on the screen. That's why if you follow on Twitter, then you'll know. If you follow on Facebook, then you'll know. And yeah, I'll make announcements in here, but you'll know um, beforehand if you follow on the other platforms, Facebook and Twitter. So go ahead and do that. And by the way, the Facebook name is, um, what is it again? Oh, the number four, then Runner 777. It's Forerunner Chronicles. So Forerunner Chronicles is... Um, is uh, the ministry, but you can put up the number four, then runner seven seven seven, and that's that's me over on Facebook. That's me on Twitter. All right, I hear you, sis. All right, the number four, then runner seven seven seven. Yeah, I haven't been I haven't been in London in a little bit. But we'll be back. All right, so uh, pretty much that's it. Um, I think there was something else I wanted to say, and it it, it just eluded me, but um. We'll see how it works out. All right, everybody. So God bless. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you for the time that I've been able to be here with everyone. I thank you for your spirit being here, speaking to us, moving on our hearts. I thank you for the commitments that we have made and for those who have answered your appeal to their hearts. I ask that you would please strengthen us by thy spirit to be steadfast in the truth for without thy spirit lord we can do nothing we have no power in and of ourselves but we know that your word has told us in acts 1 and verse 8 and ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and we need that power so that we can walk in this life as sons and daughters of you the most high god thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing Continue, Lord, to deepen our understanding of your character. For you said, this is life eternal, that we might know thee, the only true God. In Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. All right. Quick, I'll take five questions. Are you ready? Question number one. I got 17. Question number one. So I'll take five questions. Question number one. How do I keep the Sabbath? Read Isaiah chapter 58. How to keep the Sabbath. Isaiah chapter 58 is a good one. Coming to D.C., I don't know when. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna not, not going to take that as a, a question right now. Isaiah 58 teaches you how to keep the Sabbath. And I, can do a, and I promise to do a whole scope on the Sabbath and keeping the Sabbath as well, and I'm going to do that. But Isaiah, did I say Isaiah chapter 58? Yeah, Isaiah chapter 58. Yes, the word name in the Bible is direct... The word name in the Bible is connected to character. 
Um, many times in the Bible, the names that individuals possessed was actually indicative of their character. But many, when we look in the scripture, many times name is symbolically speaking of one's character. In other, for instance, in the book of Exodus chapter 34, beginning at verse 5, the Bible says, And the Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord thy God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sins, and that will by no means clear the guilty. I'll stop right there. If you continue to read those verses of scripture, Exodus 34 verses five, six, and seven, you'll clearly see that when God declared his name, he gave an outline of his character. So name in the Bible can connect to character. Um, how does um, Revelation chapter nine connect to Islam? The prophetic symbolism that is spoken of in Exodus chapter nine directly connects to Islam. First we see smoke coming up out of the pit and it covers the sun and the moon, meaning that this religion would shut out the work of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit from humanity and we see that Islam rejects Jesus as the Son of God and it rejects the Spirit of God and most of the uh, I, I, I can't go into it all in explicit detail right now because obviously for me to really go into Revelation chapter 9 I have to deal with Revelation chapter 8 but Revelation chapter 9 you see the symbolism of the rise of Islam under the Ottoman Empire you also um, uh, yeah, I have, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, can do a, I can do a whole scope on it, but I'm trying to see how I can, the falling star rather, a star in the Bible can be a symbol of a leader, and so we see here um, a, a, um, a leader that is of satanic origin being, you know who it is, Muhammad. And um, it, it's a, there's a lot of uh, great symbolism in there. You know, it talks about the riders on those horses having a crown, crowns like gold. It's not crowns of gold, but they have crowns like gold. The locusts, they have crowns like gold. They're not, they're not actually crowns of gold, they're crowns like gold. Gold in the Bible can be a symbol of faith and, and a crown in the Bible can be a symbol of authority. So even though like locusts, they don't have a leader over them, it's their faith that guides all of them. It's their faith that governs over all of them and leads them to work together as one. That's what the, it's, and it's a false faith. That's why it's light gold. It's not true faith. It's not true gold. It's a false gold, false, false faith. Anyway, I'm just throwing out some things out there. And, um, you know, this is only for those out there that have any understand, have any knowledge of Revelation chapter 9 that will actually pick up on a couple of those points that I just threw out there. But I can't really deal with that in detail right now. Want to replace Final Events DVD with something more current for evangelism? My idea is Leopard Vision. Listen, I'm just saying um, Leopard Vision is a great evangelistic DVD. And I'm not saying that because I put it out there, but I'm saying that because of actually... The, um, the feedback that we've been getting from it. When people are passing it out, you can get them in bulk from the website, yes. And I'm definitely at this time willing to drop those bulk prices. Um, the bulk prices for Leopard Vision will drop. So if you want, if you want to get Leopard Vision in bulk, just send me an email at the number 4, then runner777 at gmail.com. You let me know the, how many of them you'd want and we'll curtail the price. Only for those on scope that are serious. We'll curtail the price for you so that you can get even more. Um, and we're, we're trying to get it out there cheap. I have been consistently hearing, I've been consistently hearing from people that have been giving out leper vision that their response back has been good. People are, people, guys have been giving it, showing, I'm recently, matter of fact, one of the young men from our Bible study group, he gave it to a guy at his job, and then that guy at his job about a week later came to him and told him that he shared it with three other guys that are in his AA group. And one of the guys said, wow. He said, now I, now I can understand everything. Um, I mean, you know, I can go on and on with that. I don't want to go on and on, but it's been a really good feedback. Really good feedback. We've even had people that are in government positions in the United States. We have a guy that's right, up, right now a part of Hillary, Hillary Clinton's campaign high up in the Hillary Clinton. You have a guy that's right now in a, a, a higher position in the United States government. I'm not going to even mention it, but, you know, he was pushing out leper vision um, when, on his Facebook. <laughs> Another guy that's in Hillary Clinton's campaign, he wrote a Facebook message to his people and said, you know what, this, 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 this documentary, it's controversial. He, says, but it, he said it's controversial, but I believe it to be true. I believe it to be true. And so, um, you know, 
I, I, I encourage everybody out there to check out Leprovision. All you have to do is go to um, the Forerunner Chronicles website, Leprovision. Uh, Forerunner Chronicles on YouTube, Leprovision Volume One, Leprovision Volume One. Forerunner Chronicles on, on, on YouTube. The the Forerunner, F O R E R U N N E R seven seven seven, and Leprovision. There it is. Sim her put it on the screen, and that's it. All right, so that's enough for now. I answered about three questions. I'm going to run all. Oh, it's also on Vimeo. If you want to see the extended version of Leopard Vision, and as well at the same time, at the same time, help to fund the production of Leopard Vision Part 2, all you have to do is purchase the extended version of Leopard Vision. It is on Vimeo. We have an extended version of it there. It's not on YouTube, and it's for, you can rent it or you can purchase it for a small price, all the proceeds are going into the work of the ministry, guaranteed. All right, everybody, enough talking. God bless you. Hope you've been blessed. We'll come together again. As always, this is a forerunner, whether you like it or not, true.